Good evening, and welcome to episode number 19 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, we got a lot of exciting stuff going on tonight, but the very first thing that we need to get into is to make good on the promise that uh, you made, the Slashaholics, on episode number 18. You said that if we broke 50,000 episodes on episode number 18, that we would both drink uh, a delicious can of Mountain Dew Flaming Hot. Oh, wait. Get it in front of my face there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flaming Hot Dew. Now, got I don't 50, know. 50,000 views, so. We got 54,000 views in 10 days. And it's actually, I just uh, looked at the views right before we started filming. And it's almost up to 55,000 views. Oh, sweet. And the likes are like, the likes are like, the likes are like, totally like. No, the likes are going off the charts. Um, it's approaching like 6,000 likes. Yeah, I think we've got a lot more people actually uh, sticking around. So thank and it, you. Yeah, and engaging in the show. Josh, we need to also um, <laughs> address the elephant in the room here. You and I have set up the business email, which is slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com now the reason it's an elephant in the room boys and girls is because we haven't received one email whether it be questions for us whether it be promotional consideration considerations paid for by the following for us uh we haven't received anything uh comments likes you guys suck please read the reins nothing no dick, uh, no dick pics, nothing. Um, we need to get something in that Gmail because it's starting to like kind of annoy me, <laughs> annoy me a little bit. It's like, how do you have fifty five thousand views in ten days, but you don't have one person write into the email and <laughs> ask a question or like give us an idea? Um, come on, send us, send us something. We want to, we want to have you guys be interactive in the show. If you guys send us something good, we'll we'll put it in the show, no problem. Yes. We just need a little bit of interaction. Or anything, you know. Take yeah. one, put ask in the comments and just put it in an email. Yeah. Um, Josh, let's take care of a little house cleaning right now. Um, when is the next chapters of Ash versus Freddy? The Is it the comic novelization? No, it's just a fan book that somebody wrote. It's just Freddy and Ash. There's no Jason in it. Okay. Uh, that's going to be coming out when I get back from my trip. I'm going okay. to be... Uh, this this episode is probably going to drop after I left. I'm leaving mm -hmm. on the 21st, October 21st, and I'll be back on the 25th. So probably the 25th, 26th, there'll be some more chapters of Freddy vs. Ash. Nice. Um, and then also, Josh, uh, let the Slashaholics know when they should expect the next episode of Slash Tracks, the Halloween special, Halloween 3. Uh, we're going to drop that on Thanksgiving. Now we're going to drop that uh, on Halloween Day, uh, October 31st. We're going to be riffing Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Although I wish we were riffing, from what I've heard, Halloween 3, Halloween Ends. Um, it is it's technically a part three. So maybe later on, maybe like the season finale or something of season three, uh, we might riff that one. I, I saw Halloween Ends on the day it was available to stream. And I didn't pay a dime for it other than my subscription uh, for the streaming service, but I would like my money back. <laughs> so if I can call the streaming service or email them and uh, get a credit on my next bill, that'd be great because that movie is atrocious. And when, when a movie comes out, and I think it has 39% on Rotten Tomatoes already, I mean, it's bad. Uh, thirty nine percent, I think, is what Halloween Kills has. So they're both equally as awful. I think the first what, one, I think people had rose colored glasses on just because it was such a throwback to the first one. But in my opinion, it's not great either. And if they were going to do this, they should have just done the first one. You know, maybe whenever he was like reaching from the basement, one of those bars could have went through his arm or something. Mm -hmm. That way, you definitely knew he got burned. You know, and it could have just stopped there. But it was all a cash grab. There was no reason for a trilogy. Same with the Hobbit. They didn't need a trilogy. They could. I'm with you. They should have just when he was trapped in the house, burning alive, and the bars are there. He's in a kill cage. That's it. They should have just had awesome. She got yeah. It. After all that time, she out Michael Michael. And, gotcha, bitch. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. 
Yeah, you're done. Um, and that's just what we're going to do with the Slashaholics, too. Once we get their ass locked into sending us emails to uh, slashtracks2020 at gmail.com, we got them. There's not going to be any sequels. You're going to start sending us questions. Uh, we're going to start getting, uh, you know, sponsorship uh, offers from all these wonderful companies. Listen, 55,000 views in 10 days is nothing to sneeze at, Josh. I know. We need to help. We've got an uh, episode with 110,000 views. Um, and it's still going up. Uh, I looked the other day. It's, it's well over 110,000 views. We need a sponsor, uh, not just monetarily, but we need a sponsor to help them. They're, not, they're doing themselves a disservice. By not partnering with us. I mean, come on, man. We are the Batman and Robin of, of, slash, of, of the Slash Tracks Nation, man. I know it's a company and a, and a, a channel that we created, uh, but <laughs> besides the point, it doesn't matter. Um, a sponsor that, uh, that doesn't just want to sponsor one episode of a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, it to keep getting, you know, the same amount of views week after week. When our first dropping yeah if you guys haven't if you're not familiar with that our very first sponsor the company paid us a one-time fee so normally when you get sponsored you get paid per views so if you get like a thousand views you get like two dollars and fifty cents and that's like the bare minimum that's not even great big channels get much more than that but our very first sponsor paid us a flat fee uh josh and i each got like 50 or 75 bucks a piece i can't remember so if it got a million views that's what we were getting paid. You know, that's it. Um, and they based them uh, renewing the deal with us on how that first episode was going to do. And apparently we didn't sell enough shirts in the one episode. One episode. Yeah. That they sponsored us. So, okay, so that happened. And then the next company, which was a step up, actually paid us purviews, were very transparent from the get-go. Um way more professional than the previous company, but at the same time, not as transparent as, as they should have been because when it came time to renew, once the two month uh, situation was over, they're just like, Nope, you guys didn't sell enough. See you later. But they weren't, they never told us that re renewing was based on sales. Yeah. Uh, they had told us after the first month, Hey, we got, got some sales, you know, things are looking really good. Yeah. And we're like, all right. So then the next month, we kind of did the same amount of sales with the code they gave us. And then they're like, no, not enough. We're done. So listen, we're in, we're in the market, baby. So send us companies out there. Look at the views. Look at the, the magnetism and the electricity coming through your screens right now. Uh, we can do you some good. And you know what else is good, Josh? Fun facts. Oh, you just skipped the whole segment. Oh. Nice comment, mean comment, nice comment. Well, you did actually say something and then skate past it. Oh, oh yeah, we're going to have perfect. to drink that. Aren't we? <laughs> we're going to have to drink. Uh, we're going to circle back to the Baja, the Baja flaming, flaming Hot. It's not even a Baja. It's just Mountain Dew Flaming Hot, right? Uh, yeah. All right. What, so we're cheersing to 54,000. Cracking it up. Are you huh? chugging it? Or what are you doing? Yeah, we don't have to chug it, I okay. guess. But. Hey, put your can up. Put it to the side. There you go. There we go. Wait, Thank over you. here. Over here. Over here. You ready? There we go. <laughs> okay. Cheers. There, there we go. you go. Oh, my God. That's very cinnamon. -y. Cinnamon. -y. That's. They were giving this away by the palate full in New York City, apparently, and I think it, I know why. It tastes like. Um... It t my grandpa used to have big red gum. Yeah. It tastes like a mouthful of big red gum, and then you spit it into a can of Lacroix, and then reseal the can. Oh. It's all it's it do in a pinch. Like if I had no other soda to drink. With a blast of heat and citrus. I think I'm gonna keep the can though. That's pretty neat, you know. Do you know what it tastes <laughs> like? It it tastes like if you are chewing tobacco and you just gut it. Instead of <laughs> spitting it out. It's funny you brought up Big Red, though, because one time, a little fun story, man. Uh, as a teenager, like 17, me and my buddy went to Sonic, and we got chili cheese conies. And he was sitting there talking to the car hop, 
and I took out a piece of big red and I stuffed it down into his uh, chili cheese coney. I thought you were going to say his pants. <laughs> no, and she walks away. He sets, we're going to sit there and eat, and he takes a bite of it. And when he does, he pulls it back, and that gum is melted and it's like stringing out, you know? Yeah. And he doesn't say, <laughs> You put fucking gum in my hot dog. He's like, There is something wrong with their cheese. And like, he's pushing the button to complain about their cheese. <laughs> oh, wow. It was big red melted inside of his uh, coney. And uh, I bet that tastes better uh, than this did. So. Did you buy him another hot dog? Because I'd be yes, pissed. Yes, I bought him another one. <laughs> all right. I'd be pissed. Um, we pray okay. all the time. So. All right. Don't ever do that to me, Josh, because I'm broke. So I don't know if I can <laughs> afford another hot dog. Um, all right. First nice comment of today's episode, episode number 19. So this is regarding uh, Slash Tracks number 29, Scream 3, season 3 premiere of Slash Tracks. New favorite show, 29 more to watch now. And that's from Canaruck7. Sounds like a maybe a Canadian viewer. If you got some Crystal Pepsi, send it to us if you like the show so much. Um, no, uh, thanks for watching, and that's awesome. I mean, 29, you know, just, just a heads up, episodes 1 through 5 are a little different than the rest. But, uh, yeah, what you saw pretty much started at, season, at episode 6. You know the format, but uh, yeah, get uh, after it. I think you'll have. Uh, I was gonna say, episode number. Oh man, I would say that like we hit our stride around Troll Two. That was five. Yeah. yeah. Was that episode five? That was right before Master Evil made his appearance and before yeah. the intro and. Yeah. Ghoulies, Ghoulies, the first Ghoulies was like That's episode three. three. Yeah. That was a pretty good one. Uh, Jason X. Almost like a straight commentary. Same with uh, Freddy's Dead. <laughs> Freddy's Dead was almost like a straight commentary with a few one-liners. We didn't want to make our guest upset because <laughs> she was like a huge Freddy fan. So. No, we loved Paige. Uh, Paige is actually the <laughs> the director, uh, one of the creators, one of the editors, one of the producers of Fredheads, uh, the new documentary that just came out. She's a good friend of mine. She's a friend of the channel, a friend of the show. She, we've already got her locked in to coming on to uh, Slash, Track Revu Slash Tracks Reviews, and she's going to do a Nightmare on Elm Street episode with us. Sweet. And then Anthony Brownlee, who is also one of the main uh, stars of Fred Heads, is locked in to do an episode of Slash Track Reviews. And I think he's going to do... Um, he really likes um, Friday the 13th Part 3, I think. So I think he's locked into that one. It's 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 two or three. I can't remember, but I want to say it's three. Sweet. So we've got some guests locked up. Yeah, and she, um, did, she did crack some jokes during the slash tracks episode on Freddy's Dead. Yeah, she made a joke about um, John Doe's height. Uh, <laughs> that was really funny um, because the guy who played John Doe, uh, who goes to Springwood and ends up in the the youth center, is tiny. He's yeah. he's he's a very little guy. He's got to be like five. He's like pot monster in my pocket size. He's tiny. Uh, I will tell you this though: episodes one through five, you have to have like your own copy of the movie, line it up when we start our commentary. Uh, but from six on, either we show the movie on YouTube if we're able to, or we include a link to Google Drive where you can watch it uh, with the movie included. If we can't show it for copyright reasons on YouTube. Yep. So yeah, from six on, it's a lot easier. Uh, but the first five, just make sure you get your own copy and uh, have fun with it. We uh, we sure did. So I think you'll enjoy it. Time to get into mean comment. And this guy was a this guy was a dick, but he was trying to be funny, so I wasn't mean back to him. Um, he says, "I want MST three K. We have it at home. You guys are MST three K at home. Thumbs down." <laughs> and this is from Ibrahim Gilgore. Um, Ibrahim, that was actually a really nice attempt at riffing us about our riffing. That being said, uh, I'm going to say what I say to everybody. You can fuck right off. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for leaving a comment. Thanks for watching. Thanks for helping the algorithm. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and give us an email at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. 
if you have any promotional considerations or any paid sponsorship opportunities you would have for us, we will certainly give them a look. Ibrahim, uh, what are your thoughts, Josh, on this guy's shitty comments? Well, we definitely know that we're not MST3K at his home because we've been visiting his mom at home for years, <clears throat> and uh, we didn't see slash tracks there. Uh, yeah. Secondly, if we were and your parents picked it up and took it home, at least we fooled them. Uh, but no, I take it as a compliment. You know, we're an homage to MST3K. So you're putting us in the same ballpark there. If we're Thanks. generic, we're still, you know, there you go. Hey, man, both of us grew up with not a lot of money. We, we you know, multi meal, value meal families, we shopped towards the bottom of the cereal aisle. Uh, so, you know, we grew up down in that area, and the show is down in that area, apparently. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're like Ernie McCracken on Kingpin, dude. We've been to your mom's house, Ibrahim. Uh, sometimes, you know, we're there before you even wake up. Uh, so, you know, eating multi-meal out of your freaking ca cabinets. So, why don't you think about that, pal? Uh, let's get into good comment. Uh, nice comment to end this little segment here. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> You blacked out from the flaming hot Mountain Dew. It's starting to eat that, through your it's, brain. It's got a really bad aftertaste, but it, I'm surviving. Oh, get out of here! The aftertaste doesn't last for five minutes. Um, great Bill and Ted send off. Great variety. Great program. And that's uh, in reference to Slash Tracks News episode number eighteen, which is blowing up right now, almost fifty-five thousand views. And that's from Mehmet Can Demir. A lot of cans in these today. Yeah, that's, that's, it's a can-do spirit. But yeah, thank you for noticing the be excellent to each other thing. You can leave a good comment, Ibrahim. You can do it. <laughs> you don't have to be a dick. Uh, Josh, let's get into some fun facts. Let's do it. <laughs> First fun fact of the episode. Rabbits can smell their dead relatives in the feces of predators. <laughs> oh, well, that's a horrible, horrible way to find out. Mom, Dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> or, or like, what is that smell? Uh, it's either my dead relative or a freshly opened can of flaming hot Mountain Dew. <laughs> That's what? terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying. These po these poor bunnies are hopping around the forest, and they can actually smell their dead relatives in the scat <laughs> of these predators. <laughs> That would make it easier for like a rabbit revenge movie, though. You oh, know, it yeah. tracks. It tracks the animal because it smells. Its... <laughs> half the movie, normally in a revenge movie like that, is the person trying to find out who did it and then tracking them. If the the rabbit can immediately smell who the predator was, that would cut out like no, sixty minutes to, of the runtime. It would have to track between droppings, you know. Like, oh, here's part of my mom. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's the torso. Okay, there's the legs. Okay. <laughs> as soon as I get to the head, we're in business. Um, next fun fact. Buzz Aldrin. Everybody knows him as the second man to walk on the moon. Claimed $33.31 in NASA travel expenses on his return trip from the moon. No, People still have no idea what he bought with the money. It was never explained. He had to uh, pay to hire somebody that would keep quiet about being the actual first person on the moon. They set the camera up for him. So, you know, before he, before they, before they came off. So it was uh, reimbursing that guy. I, I've always wondered, um, you know, we went to the moon in the 60s. We haven't actually set foot back on the moon, have we? Mm-mm. -mm. It's weird. It's scary because it's a, it's not a, it's not a tiny thing. <laughs> There's other places. So yeah, I I just think I find that really interesting. It's like, is it almost like when you really want to sleep with a girl, and you finally do it, and you're like, yeah, no, there's uh, gotta, yeah. there's got to be stuff up there that's more interesting that they that they wanted to check out. You know, it, they could they can't base the whole thing off of one. You know, that's like basing an entire sorority house off of the one girl you're sleeping with. Well. Well, yeah, or, or Ghoulies franchise in general. Like, you know, you didn't get enough of those lovable puppets in the first film. You got to really flesh out those characters with another nine or ten sequels. Um, it's pretty much... 
Mission to the Moon, the Ghoulies franchise. They're about the same thing. Uh, I, bet, I bet he, um, you know, he had to stop in at the gift shop. So, wow, prices in nineteen prices in the nineteen sixties on the moon were out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, Josh, it's a nice gift shop, but it had no atmosphere. Oh my God, Josh, metrophilia. Is sexual arousal caused by poetry? Ooh, it's funny you brought that up because I was just watching. Um, we, me and my wife, uh, started to rewatch Ash versus the Evil Dead, and uh, that's what starts everything off in that TV series is Ash hooking up with a chick that gets off on poetry. She's got poetry tattooed around her wrist, and they're they're smoking pot, getting stoned. And she's like, do you know any poetry? That stuff really gets me going. So that would have been a case of what the word you said. What was it? Metrophilia. And he's like, I, it's not poetry, but check this out. And he pulls out the Necronomicon. Stone reads from it. And everybody that dies after that was just so Ash could get laid. Uh, I thought, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, oh, that's funny. Because Beth and I were banging to <laughs> poetry ASMR. Um. This brings a whole new meaning to the words poetry slam. It sure does. Slam yeah. Poetry. Yeah. Uh, you at least some real metrophilia. Yeah. Listen to Jason X Death Moon. The audio. Okay. It's full of it. Some of the pages just like filthy, filthy slam poetry is what it sounds like uh, about Betty Boop and Elsa Lancaster. That I. That's all I know. I, I'm still waiting for somebody to explain what that book means, but it's on the channel. Listen, it's full of metrophiliac slam poetry. Oh, so. we'll look, we're looking forward to that one, Josh. We'll check that out. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. <laughs> um, Josh, did you know that no, no person born blind has ever been diagnosed with schizophrenia? On record. So, you know, schizophrenia is kind of delusions... Yeah. Um, they think they think images and, and are there that aren't. Um, they hear voices of people that are speaking to them, but they're not actually being spoken to. Do you think that's? Um, do you think that schizophrenia is directly linked to a certain part of the brain uh, responsible for vision that maybe would create images? Maybe sensory overload or something, you know, might be a cause of that. And they're born blind, so they don't have that. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. That's, that it's good. interesting. It's yeah. interesting. It seems like they would probably still be able to hear voices, though, because the voices, <laughs> the. Uh, well, you know what I mean? It has nothing to do with vision. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, you know what else is interesting, Josh? Passing a large stool can <laughs> stimulate the vagus nerves, the, the vagus nerves, creating an orgasm like sensation. Wow. So if you take a huge dump, it's almost like having an orgasm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, especially if you're reading a poem during. Um, that'll really do it for you. Wait, reading a what? Like reading poetry. Oh, yeah. If you're, you're And you're taking the dump, you know, it's like a double, double, double orgasm. You're yeah. reading a poetry book, like Walt Whitman or something, and you're on the toilet and you're taking a, a, a nice number two, and I just kind of think that you might explode the toilet. Like, there'd be... You know what I mean? You're, there's no way it could hold that much pure sexual energy <laughs> flowing through your bowels and your, and your ween. Like hot dew included. Yeah. Um, so if you're having... You know, say you're on the toilet and you're having an orgasm through your butthole because you're pooping... Saying it, but it, but it actually hurts because it's too big of a dump, right? You had too much flaming hot dew. Saying fuck when you're in pain can actually boost your pain tolerance by as much as thirty five percent. Is that is that right, or is that yeah. just what people you know? Because everybody yells fuck when they get hurt. I've heard like toddlers yell fuck when they hurt themselves. I don't know if they. I don't know if it's this fun fact says it's specifically the word fuck, or maybe it's just if you say something. Uh, out of like, damn! Ah! Yeah, it's like it's like a, a ah! release valve. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I was going to say, you go to the doctor and you got bad insurance and they're like, can't really, we, we don't really have the good shit uh, to, you know, numb you. So you're just going to have to say fuck a lot while we're cutting into you here. So 35%, it's going to boost your pain tolerance. It's all I can do right now. Uh, that's take why, a couple that's, Tylenol. That's why Tourette's people don't get, you know, they're not, they don't hurt as much, I guess. They're just cussing all the time. They're yeah, just cussing all the time. Well, they're probably not like Tourette's people have it better than than they make it out on True Life on MTV. Like I have Tourette's, and I'll tell you why. They can get away with anything. They can say anything. Like if they don't like somebody, like, balls, butt, fuck you, you vagus nerve, fuck, you know, sucker, dendrophiliac, yeah. metrophiliac, cocksucker. It's okay. I've got Tourette's. No, oh. I've got Tourette's. It's fine. You. Fat, bald, bastard, fucking piece of crap. Racial slurs getting thrown around. I got oh, Tourette's. Man. I got Tourette's. I said dendrophiliac, by the way. Uh, dendrophiliac, Josh, you know what that is? I do not. The person who likes to have sex with trees. Oh, yeah. Okay, I thought that was called something else, but yeah. Yeah, you were talking about uh, how metrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, perverts. Uh, you were talking about metrophilia, how starting... You know, Ash, Evil Dead, you know, the new, the TV show. Um, like, dendrophilia was kind of part of that in the very first Evil Dead because that freaking tree, you know, violates the girl in the woods, man. So there's a lot of weird shit in the Evil Dead. Um, let's get into the last fun fact of the show, buddy. Okay. An estimated one quarter of all adults will never experience a headache in their lifetime. Fuck Ever. Me. They're just yelling fuck constantly. <laughs> you're, you're, you're an X-Men character, and you're, <laughs> you're, Professor X is, you've got this elite group, okay, Wolverine, Healing Factor, Adamantium, Body Skeleton, Claws, Colossus can turn into metal, he's gigantic, super strength, Storm controls the weather, she can fly. Josh LaRue never gets a headache. <laughs> never gets a headache. <laughs> He's the worst playable character on the X-Men uh, cabinet at the mall. He is, like, just <laughs> the shittiest arcade. Like, your character, when you're st- when you're fighting Magneto or Juggernaut, you're just standing there. <laughs> you're like, I feel fine. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> it's, still, it's still a better power than... Colossus's uh, brother, Colossus, uh, he's got the worst one. He's got a well, shitty power. Oh, he's got the metal Coloss to be back. <laughs> Attached to his asshole. Uh, Josh, let's get into yours and my favorite section of the show. Let's get into sports, pal. All right. <laughs> okay, God. You're oh, Josh, is like, Josh is like, I'd rather chug a six-pack of Fleming Hot Mountain Dew. Have you got any laughs over here? Um... Okay, so this week, this last weekend, Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert set an NFL record. He threw 57 passes during Monday night's game versus the Denver Broncos uh, in a winning effort. Those 57 passes resulted in zero touchdowns, which is a record for most passes thrown by a quarterback ever in a winning effort with no touchdowns. So he threw 57 times, Josh. Uh, if you throw 30 times in an NFL game, that's an ass load, man. He threw almost double that and got no touchdowns. And they that's, won? They won because the Broncos suck. They oh. are horrible. Okay. The Broncos are like as bad as they were on the Simpsons that one year. Like when Homer wanted the uh, – Homer's like, I want the Dallas Cowboys. And the boss is like, well, all I, could, all I could afford to buy you is the Broncos. And then they show up, and they're in, her, they're in his yard with their helmets on backwards. Their <laughs> pants are on backwards. They're throwing passes to each other in the ass. Do you remember that episode? Oh, okay. there's like, yeah, yeah. That like, the, the Denver Broncos. <laughs> yeah, the Broncos, so, they, they suck this year. Um, here's, a, here's a sports slash whore story. Whore? It, it, uh, sports slash spooky. So it's like oh, half, okay. Yeah, okay. half, half here. Okay. Boxer Caleb Plant knocked out his opponent this weekend while wearing his brand new Freddy Krueger dunks. 
So he was wearing a pair of Nike Freddy Krueger dunks. Um, I'll try to include a picture of the shoes uh, in the thumbnail, maybe on the de- maybe on our desks or something. But they're 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 high top versions. They look like Freddy's skin. They're kind of green and red. They look awesome, and oh, they kind they kind of look like the shoes in Back to the Future too, when Marty has the power laces. Yeah, but they're Freddy Krueger shoes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, p- power laces. I don't know if those the Freddy Krueger dunks are a one of one, or if they are available to the like general public. So if anybody knows, can they leave a comment in the you know down below and let us know because I'm interested. I don't. And how much do they cost if they're available? Yeah. Or an email. You yeah, send us know. an email. Uh, at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. We might include your question or your comment in the next episode. And be sure to visit our Patreon that pops up throughout the episode. And you can sign up for as low as a dollar a month and support the channel and, uh, and the show. So, Also, while you're checking out the Patreon and the Gmail, be on the lookout for the upcoming audiobook, The Rain. Or the rains? The rains. <laughs> um, the release date, Josh. When is the release date for the rains? Uh, probably gonna be like set no December March. <laughs> Two thousand forty-two. Something. Yeah. Never. Um, here's here's a here's a really good sports story. NBA star. Well, he's not really a star anymore. He used to be a big time star. Dwight Howard. Just revealed, uh, he wore his famous Superman cape on and off the court. So Dwight Howard was in a dunk contest like 10 years ago for the Orlando Magic. He won it. And his winning dunk, he like took off from the free throw line and he had a Superman cape on. So it looked like he was flying. I mean, he, at this point of his career, this guy could jump. Uh, Anyway, he recently admitted that he's had sex with the cape on that he won the dunk contest uh, with multiple times. So what are your thoughts on Dwight Howard being Superman on and off the court and in the bedroom, Josh? What's the name? What's the name for being turned on by a Superman cape and poetry? You know, Superman Drophilia. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Dwight Howard's wearing the Superman cape in the bedroom Josh has got a poetry book right above his junk with a hole in, in like Andy Dufresne hiding the rock hammer and Sha- Shawshank Redemption, but his dicks in the in the book. And uh, Beth's like, "Well, I'd really like to read some good poetry today." And Josh is like, "Oh, why don't you open this book up here, babe?" Uh, yeah, Ric Flair uh, supposedly used to have sex with the NWA Championship title belt on. Ow! Yeah. Woo! 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 And then, and the woman's like, "Oh, goddamn it!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the medal from the <laughs> the front of the title belt, like it says NWA World Champ in her midsection, like Sensational Sherry. Like, there's a photo of Sensational Sherry wearing one of his robes. Like, do you think that means Ric Flair took her to Space Mountain? I'm sure he did. I'm sure he took a lot of them. But you think there was probably like, because that was like '70s and. 80s you think like because there's like jewels all over that belt the big gold belt and stuff mm-hmm. you think there's like pubes and shit that have been ripped out and they're like all over that belt if you let's go back and watch the network and zoom in on the belt it see might, what we can find yeah it might be a hairy belt i think that if they had luminol like they spray at crime scenes and they're looking for dna and blood and stuff if they sprayed luminol and put a black light over the NWA World Championship belt, they would probably find some shit. <laughs> uh, I also, this reminds me of when Paige, who just debuted with her real name, Soraya, in AEW. Um, there's like, when she was in NXT, she let her boyfriend at the time, who was a NWA guy too, or it was an NXT guy, uh, Something Maddox, I can't even remember his name anymore. Uh, he, yeah, he blew a load all over the world championship, like the NXT Women's Title. Do you remember that? Oh, I thought you were talking about like her pictures and videos that got leaked. That is what I'm talking oh, about. Okay. So in that, one of the, 
Yeah. In one of the videos, he's blowing a load on the title belt. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> what do you think Vince and Triple H were thinking when when they saw those videos? Uh, oh, new members of the club. No, I think Vince was like, God damn it, get me a meeting with, with, with Paige right now. <laughs> I'm going to see if she wants to be a paralegal. Get her in the office now. Get her a stand for God damn it. Not tomorrow, today. And I want her in a cage with me in a kiss my ass match. Triple H probably, you know, like, had to go to, like, therapy and stuff over that because he's such a goody-goody in real life, man. He's like... He- his on, uh, yeah, he's like supposed to be like really like never smoked, never drank, never did yeah. drugs, like never womanized or whatever. Good and for like, him. Yeah, it's good for him, but I'm sure that that scarred him if he saw the video. He's like, I don't really mind the the load on the belt. What I mind is that Paige and, <laughs> Paige and Mr. Maddox aren't married while they're doing this. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to her. Um... Here's the last sports story of the show here. Former Carolina Panthers head coach, Matt Rule, so he was recently fired probably two weeks ago. Uh, he had guaranteed money left on his contract, Josh. So they fired him. Okay, Matt Rule's out, Carolina. He's going to be making $834,000 a month for the next 48 months to not work. Yeah, they could have at least, you know, got some something for their money, I guess. He's fired. Look He's at out what, of the picture. That's, I mean, that's what happened with a lot of people in WCW, too. You know, they, uh, hey, you can come work for WWF and uh, get paid about a half of what you were making, or you could sit at home, you know, for a few, a couple more years and, you know, make your guaranteed money. Oh, the WCW guys when, yeah, <laughs> yeah like Sid Vicious and Sting and all those guys were like, fuck that. I'm going fishing. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing save Goldberg. The they should have saved the invasion for when they had all the big stars and, you know, their guaranteed money ran out. And I think it would have been a bigger deal. Um, the, yeah. the invasion angle, we're not, we're not into, we're going to get into wrestling right now, but um, the invasion angle was fucked from Jump Street because Vince McMahon n- never allowed it to be booked the way it should have been. He just took WCW light and had them get their asses handed to them by all the WWE stars. Because it was like Vince's way of saying, like, we beat you. You guys were our competition. I don't care that you work for us now. Fuck you. That, that's it. He just. I'm, I may never bring it up on the show again because I, I think it's really fucked up. The person who got it the worst from the WCW guys was Canyon. Well, yeah, we, yeah. We talked about Yeah, because they put him. They, they, like, outed him. Didn't yeah. they? Without yeah. him, uh, like. They outed him as a homosexual without his consent to do it. He was to be fired. And, uh, yeah, I was disappointed to hear the Undertaker push, you know, for that segment, too. But, anyways, uh, yeah, Vince really handled the invasion. In a, well, I guess he handled it as Vince would. You know, <laughs> They botched the shit out of it. Um, th- that, they could have taken the WCW invasion angle and made it a program for every pay-per-view for the entire calendar year. They, or, since they had the big stars, you know, that had like a year and a half or whatever left, <clears throat> slowly do what they did with the NWO. One wrestler shows up, you know, another wrestler shows up until you've, you know, enough, it's, it's brewing in the background. And then your big stars can finally show up in like 2002, like Hogan, Hall, Nash, Eric Bischoff could be brought in. They brought they brought all these people in anyways. Goldberg, if they had just like spaced it out, you know, and it came out of the blue, like ah, oh, you thought it was behind you, but we remember what you did to us. You put us out of business, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they come back like have like a slow W. Have so. a slow burn instead yeah. of just instead yeah, of throwing Vin- in the mid carters, you know. They had DDP. That was it. DDP and Buff Bagwell were their Booker T. Um, yeah, Booker who, T. I'm sorry. They yeah. also had like the Hurricane, uh, Hurricane yeah. Hel- Hurricane Helms at the time was the cruiserweight champion for WCW. Um, they turned him into the Hurricane, which, by the way, one of my favorite moments ever in WWE history is where the Hurricane's in the Royal Rumble and he grabs, I think it's Triple H and Stone Cold both by the throat 
<laughs> and he's going to choke slam both of them, and then they just look at each other and they just pummel the shit out of him. But I, I don't know. That was, that was a great rock, moment. Though. He beat The Rock. The, was... you, know, you know what? I'll say one thing about The Rock. The Rock gets a bad rap uh, nowadays because he's in everything, and he's, he's kind of... He's got... <sighs> He's he's overexposed and he, it's almost too much at this point. But granite fatigue. Yeah. I will I will say one thing. I will say one thing about The Rock. In his career as a professional wrestler, he was not afraid to put anyone over at any point. He he wasn't one of those guys that had to win. And he listened. He listened to Hogan in yeah. WrestleMania eighteen. When that crowd turned on The Rock and they and they reversed face. heel and babyface in the middle of the match. And any other wrestler, I think, in his position, most other wrestlers would have freaked out. But he listened to Hogan. He went to Hogan for advice in the ring, mm-hmm. and he started at, he started doing the hill stuff. Uh, the Rock did, you know. They they he he listened to Hogan and he said, "Let's play the crowd," and they did. And it was like right down the middle. That and was that, the greatest the matches ever. Yeah. That was the greatest match i've ever watched live that was the greatest match i've ever seen in my life and not because it's a technical uh tour de force masterpiece it is a classic wrestling match where from the start to finish they had the crowd in the palm of their hand every move every face uh they made everything they sold the crowd was into it from the start to finish uh it is the loudest crowd the most into it crowd I've ever seen in a wrestling match in my life. It's one of the greatest matches ever, if not the greatest match ever. Um, they tried to do it again and just couldn't capture it again. But that first no, great. they because by that point Hogan they turned Hogan babyface. Yeah, he was in the red and yellow at that point, uh, and they tried to force it. It wasn't organic. Um, WWE likes to do that. They like to just beat the dead horse till the horse isn't able to stand at all anymore, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to say one of the coolest feelings is a crowd turning you against. Oh, your naturally, wheel. naturally. Yeah, it, I was a hill for years here in like the local area. Like there's like four cities that I wrestled in for years. I still wrestled in other States, but sometimes out there I'd be a good guy. Sometimes a bad guy, but around here I was always the hill, always the bad guy. And we had the same crowd that would travel around and watch us. And one night, I ended up having to wrestle a heel, and I, the, from that night forward, the crowd just slowly started pulling like a Randy Orton on me, uh, where they had booed me for so long, they started cheering the shit I did. And it was really cool. You know, that is, just have it, yeah. That is fun. cool. That's really cool. That's like uh, when Stone Cold and Bret Hart, no, it's not like that, but it's similar. Uh, they wanted to turn you face because they liked you at that point. But the Stone Cold Bret Hart thing is where they flipped in the WrestleMania 13 match. That was also really cool. Yeah. Um, let's get into the first wrestling story of the night, even though we've been talking about first. wrestling. Yeah, we've been talking <laughs> about wrestling for 20 minutes. Um, on September 22nd, 25 years ago, Stone Cold Steve Austin hit his stunner on Vince McMahon for the very first time. And it got worse and worse on Vince taking it from that point forward until the last one. <laughs> that stunner that he hit on the most the newest WrestleMania, Vince's last WrestleMania, uh, yeah. Vince, and it was in one of our very first podcast episodes. Yeah, it was the worst stunner of all time. It was <laughs> Vince. He, he Stone Cold kicks him in the gut. Vince doesn't even like bend over. He like loses his balance. He looks like he could barely stand. Um, I guess it takes a lot of energy out of your your body, especially in your seventies when you're just banging office help all the time in Stanford. And uh, get all that hush money. Yeah, he needs to rehydrate before he goes out there in front of a big pay per view audience. Because if he's constantly blowing loads before big matches, he's older. He's not hydrated. He needs to drink more flaming hot Mountain Dew before these big events, or you're gonna have shitty looking stunners. Um, that stunner. The first one. Huh? No, what were you going to say? I was just asking if he twitched in the first one. I don't you know. know. Um, twitching that, after. That first stunner basically turned the tide for WWE in the war versus uh, WCW. Because at that point, WCW was absolutely kicking the shit out of WWE in the Monday Night Wars for almost two years at that point. And that was kind of when Vince McMahon and the Stone Cold feud started to like heat up. 
that was basically what tur- turned the tide, I think. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. That that started getting them around the corner. But you know, WCW beat them to the punch on that with Eric Bischoff. Uh, you know, getting power bombed through the stage uh, by Kevin Nash in the early NWO days. Yeah, but d- d- Kevin Nash wasn't even close to as over as no, Steve no, no, Austin no. I'm was. Saying, I'm saying like attacking the owner you know, the president or whatever. Uh, the WWF just did it way better. I remember watching Raw and, like, Stone Cold was being arrested every other week or something, you know, being, can't come in the building, throwing and the belts off. The... <clears throat> God damn it, you keep Stone Cold out of this building, even though he's selling this motherfucker out every Monday. I don't want to see that redneck here. I only saw it in bits and pieces, though, because I only watched Raw during commercial breaks. Until the night, because I, I was a big Cactus Jack fan, mm-hmm. until the night that Tony Schiavone said, don't turn over to the other channel, folks, because uh, Cactus, uh, Mankind, who wrestled here as Cactus Jack, is going to win the world title. That'll put butts in the seats. And I was like, oh, Cactus Jack is going to win? I was like, Mankind, <laughs> hell yeah. So you immediately flip over to WWE. <laughs> yeah, because I, I really, really thought Mankind was underrated, even back then. Like, he was one of my favorites in WCW. Uh, you know, in the uh, like early '90s and shit. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and if anybody deserved a world title <clears throat> run at that, or even if it was a, as short as it was, was Mick Foley because yeah. he was an absolute uh, company guy at that point for WWE. He literally, he literally put his body through the Hell in the Cell cage and took the gnarliest bump I've ever seen in my entire life. At that hell in the cell against Undertaker. Uh, he would yeah. do anything for that company. He would absolutely deserved to run with the belt. And then Shane McMahon said, hold my beer. <clears throat> and, yeah, but uh, sh- uh, sh- <laughs> Shane... Whatever. Uh, hey, uh, did you know, oh, Josh, I'm... that on Monday, the berserker, John Nord, uh, very famous, very huge main event, main eventing berserker from WWF, just turned 63 years old on Monday. Husk. 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 Yeah. Husk. 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 <laughs> if you go back and you watch some of those uh, WWF superstars or whatever, you know, the Berserker was on, he was huge. John Nord was a God damn. Yeah. John Nord was a big, big dude. John Nord was one of the Minnesota guys. Uh, he came out with, like, Legion of Doom, Mr. Perfect. All those guys that came out of Minnesota. Um, but yeah, John Nord had a shitty gimmick. Uh, he couldn't talk on the microphone. He, he, could, he, he did power moves and stuff, but they weren't really that believable. He had the physical size, but he had zero charisma. Yeah. No charisma. You know who he, has charisma? Mantar. Uh, buckets and buckets of oh. charisma. Hey, I cut you off. I cut you off, and I apologize for that. What were you going to say about the Berserker? Oh, I was going to say he turned—he turned sixty-six. You said or sixty-three? He's sixty-three. So in three years, he can actually retire. So he's like one of the oldest living professional wrestlers, then. Yeah, from that era. Yeah, there's not a lot yeah, of guys. Sir, I'm not trying to be morbid. I'm not yeah. trying to be more. Um, Rick there's Flair, not a lot of them. Oh, yeah, there's really not a lot, and there should be more. There really should. We should still have. Roddy Piper, we should still have a warrior. You know, it's a sign of what was going on back then. Cocaine, um, steroids. Such a cartoony era of wrestling could be so dark, you know? Uh, the Dark Side of the Ring is a cool series. Uh, you learn a lot on there. They were on the road too much. Too much. There's no balance at all. They were, they were going from small town to small town making house shows. As a kid... You know, when we were kids, Josh, I had no idea that they were wrestling six other days out of the week. Um, they were wrestling. Sometimes they were wrestling twice a day. Uh, I didn't know what house show was until I went to one in like 1997. Yeah, so I, I didn't know what house shows were until the early 90s. Um, and then sometimes on WWE TV, you'd see like, oh, the Rockers, you know, beat so and so at a house show, and it's like, what? What the hell are you talking? And then when Diesel won, your house show? What? yeah, <laughs> WWF, like when Diesel won the championship from Bob Backlund at Madison Square Garden at a house show, 
I didn't even know that that was possible or a thing. And even when I was 11 years old, I was like, why the hell are they switching the belt on a non-televised event? It didn't make any sense to me. Same with the, you know, they, they gave the Rockers the championship belts, but because a rope broke, they... The top rope. Yeah, they, they why not redo it? I, because know, by I that, just... you know, I'll tell you exactly why they didn't redo it. Because by the time they, like, got done taping it, because I think they did, or, or I don't know if they, actually, I don't know the answer to this. I think they might have redid the match, but I think... When they did the match and the top rope broke and then the Rockers went over the Hart Foundation, I think by the time Monday rolled around, Vince McMahon had already changed his mind with the booking decision because Vince did that. Maybe he just didn't get the reaction from the crowd. Like, God damn it. Like, I didn't react to, you know, Marty and and Sean. You know, I get more excited when I get a new paralegal to interview. What the hell? There there will never be a better like singles character era and faction like faction group era than the 90s like the mid to late 90s and there will never be a tag division like the mid 80s to early 90s back then when you had the natural disasters you had uh, demolition you know you had the rockers you, you had so many money awesome tag teams. legion of doom yes oh my god midnight express rock and roll express Freaking Brain Busters, Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson, Strike British Force, Blues. Killer Bees, British Bulldogs. Fucking loaded tag team division. The, I loved the tag team division back then. I, like Whenever I started wrestling, I was like one of the only people in our circuit that actually held on to the damn tag rope in the corner. Because like, you have like a rope and you're not as far as you can go and still hold that rope is as far as you're supposed to go from the corner. Yeah, and, like me and my tag partner actually used that to like choke out somebody when the ref wasn't looking. When we had tag, I'd put my foot up on the top rope and he'd slam his head into it. I love like, it. And I'm like, guys, come on, dude. Th- th- did you not watch wrestling? Do you not know how tag teams work? There um, heels. So if you go back and watch WWF '80s and '90s tag team matches, the baby faces always hold the tag ropes. The heels never do. Because they're heels. It's psychology. They're fucking cheating. They're tagging it. Uh, They're lucky if they even tag in when they get the three count. They might not even tag in. We've done that before behind the ref's back. Go, like, you know, do that swap out. Oh, that's great. Um, Josh, so you were talking about wrestlers not living to be very old from that era. Um, Now that the Queen of England, God rest her soul, passed away, you know, she was... Mid nineties. Uh, now that the Queen of England has passed, Jerry Lawler is the longest uh, running monarch alive today. He's been the king of wrestling since nineteen seventy four. Wow! So the king is still alive. Jerry the King Lawler, King of Memphis. He's alive and well. He's he's in his seventies, I think. If not for him, we wouldn't have a lot of the talent we have that we had. Uh, and that includes the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Uh, Jerry Lawler made that, that, that man's career. And then Hogan solidified it for him. Jerry, um, Lawler, Jerry Lawler was one of the people who was instrumental in getting Macho Man Randy Savage on the scene. Because Macho Man was wrestling for his father, Angelo Poffo. And they had like kind of a cross promotion with Memphis Wrestling. So Jerry Lawler and Macho Man were main eventing some matches for Memphis. Which got him seen by WWF, which led to Macho Man making the jump to New York. But Jerry Lawler was hugely instrumental, just like you said, in elevating a lot of wrestlers to the big time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say WCW mid-90s, you know, 96, 97, 98, was like the most realistic storylines and whatever. But go back and watch some Memphis stuff. It's hard to tell when these guys are shooting or when it's a work. You know, when they got on the microphone, they would say personal shit about the person they had a feud with, you know, going into their match. And sometimes you're like, whoa, that was, is that real? You know, it's like, are they using real shit like Sean and Brett did? Oh, yeah, Uh, the sunny days comment. Oh, God, yeah. Man, Brett and Sean, they threw some real shit back at each other. Well, 
do you remember when Rick Rude was feuding with Jake Roberts in the 80s and Rick Rude had airbrush tights with Jake Roberts' wife right above his crotch? <laughs> like an airbrushed image of Jake Roberts' wife at the time right on Rick Rude's crotch area. Yes, yes, that's, yes. That's pretty... <laughs> I mean that's pretty heelish, man. That's that's ridiculous. Um, I've never been a better talker than Jake the Snake, though. Him Jake and was, Rowdy Roddy Piper had the best stick skills of any hill. They were totally opposites. Jake didn't speak didn't speak louder than this. He didn't have to raise his voice. And Roddy Piper was like very uh, uh, machine gun. Uh, he's rapid speech, uh, very intelligent, uh, really quick. Uh, spoke louder. Uh, but backed his shit up. <laughs> like, he'd say something, but he'd nail you with a coconut. He'd yeah, waffle Jake you. Jake was a philosopher, man. Jake the Snake Roberts, if he wasn't a wrestler and, a, you know, didn't have so many demons, he could have been, like, a modern-day philosopher. That dude is smart as shit. Yeah, Jake... J- Jake so is uh, a brilliant mind. If Jake hadn't been so lost, uh, personally, for most of his career... He could have been one of the great bookers, one of the great story writers, one of the great... uh, He could have helped behind the scenes anywhere he was, but he just could not get his shit under control. He finally... Yeah, he he finally has his life in order. um, And that's a really, really great, great story. Because when I thought of wrestlers dying, Josh, early, he was the first one that I thought was going to die early. Exactly. Like, yeah. I was always worried to, about Jake the Snake, but he's doing really good. He's sticking to his shit. Scott Hall was another. I'm sorry that we lost him, but he did turn his shit around, you know, and I think it was more about how long he was alone there at the end. He, he, uh, it was, COVID had just happened. Scott Hall wasn't doing very good, not being able to go out and do autograph shows, not being able to go be with his friends. They were that whole social distancing, isolate yourself stuff. And he started to relapse a little bit and it led to him. You know, he was alone in his house. Like you said, he fell, uh, he broke his hip. Right. Yeah. And he just laid in his kitchen for days, days. And then when he finally was able to get to the phone and call DDP and DDP showed up, got him to the hospital it was, it was just, just too. It was too late. Uh, they did the operation, and it just you know he had heart attack after heart attack. Um, Scott Hall, I've talked about this before. He's one of the great, one of my great heroes as a kid. Yeah, great innovator. Uh, too. Yeah, Scott Hall came up with Sting's crow gimmick. Scott Hall created his own gimmick in WWF, the Scarface Cuban Uzi Machismo. He actually came up with that gimmick pitched it to Pat and Vince and they, they took it and created a huge character, which he parlayed into NWO, which was the biggest angle in the nineties, which was the biggest era of pro wrestling ever. So that's all Scott Hall. Yep. He's missed. He's missed. He started the guaranteed contracts for wrestlers too. Yeah. Him and he was the first one. Cause Nash got the second one. Yep. Yeah. Scott Hall. Hey, Scott Hall. Love him or hate him. Was an innovator. And he was also a great mind. And you know who was a good friend of his? Jake Roberts. Exactly. Great minds are usually the ones that, are the, that have the most demons. Um, but let's just mark it up one more for the good guys. And, yeah. Uh, the next story. So. Too, too sweet. Too sweet. Uh, last wrestling story of the, of the show here. Um, so let me, let me read how. Okay. Big Time Wrestling has announced that 69-year-old Ricky the Dragon Steamboat will be making his in-ring return in Raleigh, North Carolina on November 27th. So, word <laughs> word got to Ric Flair that the, uh, the Dragon is making a comeback at 69 in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, uh, so, Ric Flair was quoted, Ricky Steamboat, coming back makes me want to come back again. I went back up to Lincoln and started training again. What the hell else is there to do? We predicted so, it. Yeah, Ric Flair, who just had Ric Flair's last match, you know, a month or so ago. And if you the Slashaholics haven't watched it, it is awful. 
He is terrible <laughs> in this match. He looks bl- he's blown up from the minute he walks in the ring, but he's in his 70s. He's got major health problems. I'm not judging him, okay? Bret Hart looks so worried the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of Undertaker is like, you know, kind of like, yeah, Rick, you you do your thing and Brett's over here. Yeah, cuz Brett knows like, hey man, this is not good. <laughs> exactly. Um no, Rick, so Ricky, Ricky the Dragon's coming back, so Rick Flair's all pumped up, and he wants to come back. What, what are your thoughts, Josh? Should uh, the Nature Boy make one more last match? Sure. You know, if he wants to die in the ring, I want that for him. Uh, I think that's the only death that he'll be happy with, and that's probably how it's going to happen one day. As far as Ricky the Dragon Steamboat <clears throat> coming back, the first thought is if you have to call your company big time, it's like calling something fancy, like fancy ketchup, you know, like it's the cheapest thing. It's like a buck and it says fancy. It's like you're trying a little too hard. No fancy people have fancy ketchup. Big time wrestling, I'm sure their biggest star was like somebody that jobbed on AEW uh, for a couple shows or something. Um, John Norris. Big time Nord. wrestling. Berserker. Huh? The Berserker. Yeah, the Berserker. <laughs> He's going to fight the... Uh, second thought, though, if anybody can do it, <clears throat> Ricky, Ricky, Ricky Steamboat. Uh, I have a lot more faith in him pulling off a good match at 69 than I do Rick. Um, yeah. Ricky Steamboat had a a match with uh, Chris Jericho. It was like a three way. It was like Piper Steamboat and Snuka, and it was like at a WrestleMania, God, like 10 years ago. Yeah, and in, like and so Steamboat was probably 59 at the time, and he performed so well in that match that WWF actually gave him a contract for more matches, and he wrestled some more matches after that at, like, the age of 58, 59. So I bet during this comeback match, you're going to hear you still got it, Chance, from the big-time wrestling crowd. Yeah, all uh, 17 of them at the event are going to be <laughs> going crazy for the Dragon. Um, let's get into some spooky... And horror news for the episode. All right, let's do it. All right. We talked about Ash earlier in the episode, and we got some big news for for Ash fans out there. Ash okay. Williams uh, from e- from the Evil Dead is going to be coming to the video game Fortnite. Oh, my God. He's already in Dead by Daylight. But now yeah. Fort- okay. He's going to be in Fortnite now. So now I finally have a reason to play Fortnite. Yeah, there you go. Just, does he get his chainsaw? Oh, I'm sure stick. he has his. I'm sure he has his boomstick. I'm sure he has his chainsaw. I uh, we don't know yet, Josh, if he has his poetry book though. Oh, okay. his Necronomicon. Yeah. yeah. So we don't know how He's much a Ash. Ash. Necrometrophiliac. <laughs> yeah, we don't know how much uh, Punani Ashley Williams is going to be getting in Fortnite, but we'll keep you abreast of the situation as it develops because it is a fluid situation. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I can think of another. I can think of another way to work in a word. Uh, so there you go, Josh. We recently lost a horror icon, uh, Ted White, who played Jason in uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, a final chapter, has passed away. And Ted was ninety five or ninety six. Wow. And Ted White, uh, and for my money is probably my second favorite or third favorite Jason. Uh, C.J. Graham and Kane Hodder are my top two. But Ted White was great. He did a really good job in Final Factor. He stayed away from the cast. Um, He stayed away from the cast while they were filming the movie because he wanted it to be more uh, ominous and, you know, scary for them. And he hated, hated uh, Corey. Corey Feldman? Yeah, he hated Corey Feldman. He well, wanted to kill him for real. <laughs> so he saw what the rest of the world wouldn't actually see much earlier uh, than everybody else. Because Corey Feldman, I, I'm going on record. I am wearing a Goonies shirt right now. I am a big fan of Corey Feldman's film career. I love the Goonies. I love uh, Lost Mask Boys. versus Demonic Toys. I love Stand By Me. I love License to Drive. Okay? Now, as far as his music career, it's terrible. It is a watered-down 
copied generic version of Michael Jackson. Yeah. Um, his personal life, I am confused. Is he sober? Is he not sober? I, I don't know. I hear all these stories about how he's sober and he only eats fruit and he's a vegetarian. And then I hear all these other stories about how he's actually abusing these girls who are in the Corey's Angels. And he's oh, sexually, oh. yeah, sexually abusing them and not paying wow. them and uh, having them do drugs. And like, this is all alleged. I don't know if these are, if this is happening. I'm confused. I don't know what kind of person he is. I hear good and bad. But I see the stuff he's doing and the way he's behaving. And just from my purview, from what I'm seeing, I'm not impressed. Yeah. I don't know if he's doing those things. Those are all alleged. I, I don't know. But I'm confused, Josh. Is he a good person? Is he a bad person? He's trying to call out all these abusers of him uh, and Corey Haim when they were children. Which, which, if it happened, that's horrible. That is terrible. But if he's turning around and abusing people later on in his own life, that's yeah. not all right. That's not okay. Yeah, it's definitely a topic to get more details on because... Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> you think somebody that went through that wouldn't want to pass that on, but yeah. that's how it happens. Yeah, abusers tend to become abusers later on in life. And I don't know. And, I, and you know what? I hope it's not true. Because I, I, I want to like Corey Feldman, but... Would I hang out with Corey Feldman in real life? Probably not. He kind of seems like a douche. <laughs> like, I don't... Like, hey, Corey, why don't you... Like, let's go shoot some hoops. Or you want to play some Fortnite? Ash Williams is in it. Ah, you know, I don't know, man. I got to go put out some shitty music. I, I'm busy. I'm cutting a cantaloupe over here uh, I for dinner. Go, I got to go prepare for a movie that even though I'm only 55, <laughs> I'm playing a 70-year-old. <laughs> I got to go prepare for a movie that doesn't exist and I wasn't cast in. Okay, sure. Uh, the Mask versus Demonic Toys Origins. Yeah, um, everybody's just racing to the theaters to see that film. I'd rather go see that movie than ever watch Halloween Ends ever again. One more time in my life. It's fucking terrible. Blood, um, so, Josh, last so week, last week, 28 years ago, Wes Craven's New Nightmare was released in theaters. Best Freddy movie by far. My favorite. Are, are you serious? My, fa my favorite Freddy movie. Yes. You're not being not, an not ass joking. right now? You're not being an ass? No. no, I'm not being an ass. I think that it is the scariest portrayal of Freddy Krueger. It, it changes all the rules because it's not technically Freddy. Okay, I guess in the it's whole his. series it's my favorite one. I think it's the scariest one out of the whole series. But since it's not technically Freddy then I'll say Dream Warriors is my favorite Freddy movie. But, yes, uh, New Nightmare is one of my favorite. It's in my top two Nightmare on Elm Street uh, movies, and I think it was terrifying. Just the thought that this was like a demon. And I wish they had done something where that Freddy interacted with Robert England, you know, or possessed oh, yeah. Robert became the Freddy or something. Yeah, know? they could do a little parent trap action. They could have, like... The split, like, where he's interacting with himself. They should have had that. That was such a missed opportunity. Yeah, you're 100% correct on that. That would have been great. Like, who are you? I'm painting a picture of this Freddy demon. Well, who are you, bitch? Well, I'm me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Um, If they became wrestlers, like pro wrestlers, they could do a little twin magic <laughs> they could like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, was that Robert England pinned or was that Freddie? I, I don't know what happened well, here. Freddy, well, Freddie's the one with the boob implants, so you can tell whenever it's uh, Robert, whenever it's Freddie. <laughs> you well, you'd know who was who was in the in the match actually, because Freddie from New Nightmare would be the one in the fucking leather pants. Uh, they're really. Sh <laughs> Did you know that he's wearing leather pants in this? And yeah, in a duster. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Um, catch that he was wearing leather pants until years later like my 30th viewing of it i was like why are freddy's pants like shiny like what the hell um i so here's my opinion of new nightmare okay. it's like it's like top four for me it's not freddy um freddy's a bitch in the final fight miko little miko from pet cemetery hands him his ass with heather laying camp he's not really form formidable uh, he gets a knife through his tongue. 
He gets locked in the furnace, kind of like Michael in Halloween Ends, although he actually does burn to shit in this one, so he's dead. There's a whole Hansel and Gretel thing that leads yeah, up to that. Yeah, 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 I, and that's great, but if he's this actual, if this is the darkest, this is where this Robert, this is where Freddy was created, and this is the spirit, the essence of Freddy. Kind of a bitch. He's kind of a... I, I, I got one even better for you, as much as I love the movie. The babysitter was supposed to be... Like yes. under his, con- well, she was supposed to be under his control, but they Working cut that. For him. Story- they cut the storyline, so now it looks like this demon was making phone calls and sending letters harassing Heather Langenkamp uh, because <laughs> there was no human emissary on Earth that was helping this demon. Right? So it was just yeah. the demon. Yeah. So he's like, "Oh fuck! It's time to call her." <sighs> you know? <laughs> How much like? Okay, so he's a demon, and he's in a, either in hell, or he's in the boiler room, or he's on Elm Street. We don't know. Is he? Is it long distance for him to call? <laughs> Heather, like, like what? 10, 10, 20. This is a uh, mid nineties. One eight hundred collect. When I used to go, like we were broke <laughs> as kids, I would, I would call my mom, and it would be like, "You have a collect fall for a collect call from. Please pick me up at the park." <laughs> and then my mom would not accept, and then come pick my ass up. Uh, so the one thing I'll say about New Nightmare. Wes Craven, this was kind of the, the, the bubblings, the, the first kind of self-aware, uh, this is Scream kind of before Scream. Yeah. So Heather is playing herself, Heather Langenkamp is playing herself. She's kind of aware, she's self-aware that she's been in these horror movies. She's kind of going through the steps of the, of the script. Um, it's it's like screen yeah it's it's screen before screen so that's a really interesting uh, way to look at it. Uh, it did very poorly at the box office. It wasn't heavily promoted. Um, I don't like that Freddy's not actually Freddy. I don't like that he's wearing leather pants. I don't like that. Uh, I don't know. I it's not it's it's really universally loved and it's not one of my top three. I think Freddy is scarier in Freddy's Revenge. I think he's the scariest version of himself. He just doesn't give a fuck. There's no one-liners. So help yourself, bitch. And he's just fucking <laughs> slaughtering all these kids at the pool party. He's they down there. They could all attack him and kill him and rip him to pieces. <laughs> he's yeah, got I know, I know, I know. They could have kicked the shit out of him. But he, the makeup is great. He's got the witch look. Uh, he's he's kind of wet looking. He's making out with uh, Meryl Streep, generic Meryl Streep. Uh, he's about ready to finger her with the glove. A uh, lot of good stuff in that movie. I want to. I want to make just a fan fiction short movie. If somebody wants to finance it, where I'm in a nightmare and I, I'm like, "Wake me up!" and I'm grabbing hold of Freddy, you know, and they wake me up, and Freddy comes into the world where he's like, "I'm gonna get you!" Oh my god! Just you know, all the nerve damage and stuff from the burns since he's in the real. World. Oh yeah, because he can feel it. He can feel yeah. it now. It's like shit. I am like. Oh my god! I'm in mess. Yeah, his shit starts healing, and he can't move because the scar tissue just kind of fuses his body together. Uh, so wait a second. You just ask people to to fund your your fan fiction film. We can't even get people to fucking sponsor a podcast that has one hundred and ten thousand views. You think we're going to get somebody that's going to sponsor your movie? Are you are you nuts? We're begging people to write us emails. <laughs> Do you think some guy is going to watch this and be like, "Oh yeah, I'll fucking sponsor that"? Oh, like, if not me, I would like to see somebody make that. You know, just somebody else just. What it would feel like for somebody with that much burn damage to come into the real world and not have his powers anymore? He'd be, you wouldn't even know he's Freddy Krueger because he'd be fucking wrapped up like a mummy uh, <laughs> from all the skin grafts he'd need to be able to move his body so he could fucking gut bitches again. And, and yeah. No way. Uh, last horror story, spooky story of the episode. Okay. By the way, this was the funnest spooky segment we've ever done on the show. That, that was a lot of fun. And your your idea, that is an idea that could be on uh, Robot Chicken. I really think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I hope Seth. I hope Seth Green sees this episode of Slash Tracks Action News and and just gives us a credit. You know, puts a put and maybe sends us an email thanking us at uh, slash. Yeah, send us an email, Seth Green, at uh, slash tracks two thousand twenty at gmail dot com. There you go. Last 
horror story of the episode. Okay. Now, I asked you this yesterday, <clears throat> and I'm not, I don't know if you confirmed it. I wanted to see if it was correct. Now, allegedly, Slashaholics, the upcoming reboot of The Crow, starring Bill Skarsgård, who played Pennywise the Clown in the new It movies, has allegedly wrapped filming... And the production began in July of 2022. And I saw a picture, and it looks like Bill Skarsgård in, like, crow makeup. So, But it, it threw me off a little bit because I was just thinking Pennywise the whole time. So he went from, like, clown makeup to more makeup. It, it looked like Pennywise as the crow. I don't know what I think about this. Me and my my wife have a set of uh, rings from the Crow, the original Crow. Like we're big fans of the original, <clears throat> so okay. we're not too hyped for this one because we didn't like the sequels either. Like it, because the first Crow movie was kind of ahead of its time. It was like yeah. very original. The cinematography, everything. It felt like it was a comic on the. Hey, is that a did we, big screen? Did we get a Gmail? No. Did we get an email? Let's see. No, nope, it's just one of my kids. You're like, nope, it's just someone that wants to fund my movie idea about Freddy Krueger's <laughs> burns. <laughs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> you don't say. You don't say. You don't say. Okay, bye. It's Corey. What do, what do you say? Oh, they didn't say. Yeah, exactly. It's Corey <laughs> Feldman. He, <laughs> he's suing us for making fun of him on the show. Too bad he, saw it for. <laughs> he needs to crowdfund a lawyer, though, to sue us first. But the crow thing, you know, I, I don't, I'm not excited about it. I don't, unless they do a really good job, but I just don't see him as the crow. It's, it's always going to be Brandon. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not very excited about it. You know what, though? I will watch it. If it's, a, if I, I probably won't go to the theaters if it's released in theaters, but I'll definitely uh, give it a look on a streaming platform. Not horror, but I'm definitely going to go see the Mario Brothers movie because Jack Black in the trailer killed it as Bowser. Man, i got to check that shit out. It's going to be good. You've got me excited about that because I love Jack Black. I love Mario Brothers, and that was the perfect segue, which people are going to think you know the rundown, but you don't because the first story of headlines is a Mario Brothers headline. Uh, wow. Yesterday in 1985... Nintendo released Super Mario Brothers in North America. That was probably the first video game I ever remember playing. And one of my first memories of something exciting happening in a video game was when I accidentally uh, stepped on the turtle shell on the, like, the, you know, the stage. Yeah, like where you're going up to jump on the pool. And in the level, I accidentally jumped on a turtle shell and got, you know, infinity lives. What are your thoughts? Was that a did that game have a big impact on your life, or did you like the game? Or oh yeah, I loved it. I was addicted to it. I had I even had nightmares one time. My mom told me that Mario was after me in my dream, and I was saying, you know, Mario was going to get me. Not Bowser for some reason. Uh, <laughs> when I was real little, playing it with my older brother, older siblings, I called Luigi Little Luigi. Yeah, uh, I couldn't say I couldn't say Luigi. And one of the biggest memories I have of this game, the original Mario Brothers, which we could do a whole discussion on the whole series, but we're just talking about the first one. Um, back in the day, we didn't have save files, kiddos. Um, you know, if you wanted to play your whole game, you had to like pretty much pause it, leave it paused, come back to it whenever you can, if you had to go to school or whatever. Just leave it turned on. I uh, went to a fair, like a little mini fair was going on one town away. And I remember the level. I was on World 7-3 doing the run, like doing a, I was no warping. I was trying to beat the game. And uh, it's uh, it's like a remix of World 2-3 with the flying fish, you know? Mm -hmm. But they throw in some like uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Koopa Troopa flying ones. Anyways, so I had to pause it there so we could go to the fair. And that night I got on the scrambler and I was the only person sitting in the bucket in the one I was in, the bench. And the guy didn't lock it right, so every time it would go forward, the gate would open, and I'd have to like pull it back, like for dear life, or, you know, it would shoot forward. That's terrifying. It just, yeah, it was terrifying. And I remember all of that, 
because uh, you know, I mean, because of that, that's how I remember uh, playing for the first time Mario Brothers from beginning to end and beating it. Because when I got back, I beat the game, and that was the first time I ever beat it uh, by myself. I was like six, I think. Dude, and you beat it under extreme emotional duress because you yeah. were almost <laughs> dying at the fair over and over yeah. again. That was it. Was like, oh God, no! It was, it was creepy. So that first game, I've got a lot of memories with it. I Never remember had a Game Genie. <laughs> I couldn't afford a Game Genie. Uh, I remember leaving the Nintendo on, and uh, you'd come back, and it would be hotter than hell, like hot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you left it, and it's like, do I want to burn the house down or do I want to lose my progress? I'll chance it. I'm leaving this son of a bitch on. Like, there's no way I'm going back and playing those levels again. I can't. My four or five year old brain was justifying burning down the house, so I didn't have to go back and restart the game again. RPGs um, were the right idea back then, but the other games they just yeah they had codes right shit. They yeah had codes they had uh, uh, Zelda you could save it. Some games had the little dot codes or number. Mm -hmm. I think Mega Man. Had the dot codes, right? You'd have to, like, write them down. It's been a long time <clears throat> since I played Mega Man on Nintendo. The last Mega Man game I was super into was Mega Man X for Super Nintendo. And I'm a dumbass, and I sold it uh, when I needed money, like, 20 years ago. And now it's worth, like, $100 per cartridge for Mega Man X. Yeah. So I sold one eight years ago or nine years ago for, like, 30, 33 bucks, And, yeah, it's worth a lot it's right like, now. It's, like, worth over $100 now. Um... Second headline of the night. Apple has officially been fined $19 million for not including chargers with the iPhone. So if you buy an iPhone, everybody knows you don't get a charger with it, which is stupid. That's stupid. Um, so they finally got fined. So, But $19 million is a drop in the bucket, Josh, because think of the money they're saving by not including chargers with their iPhone. Yeah. They've got to be saving hundreds of millions of dollars so this fine is a joke it's ridiculous uh i've never owned an iphone probably never will <clears throat> i just don't want to have to put up with that kind of bullshit you know i'm a samsung guy um but yeah that that would piss me off to go buy a super expensive phone no charger have That's to turn ridiculous. around pay what like 25 30 bucks for a charger probably it's just and, it's like a it's unneeded it's totally unnecessary it's just them being like our phone's so nice and you you're gonna want it because it's an iphone uh you're not getting a charger you're gonna have to pay extra for it's just ridiculous it's like if you got a video game system but you didn't get the controller yeah uh, I, I thought it was weird when video game systems stopped giving you a game when you bought a video game. oh <laughs> yeah system. oh yeah. yeah um nintendo came with mario brothers and duck hunt maybe the olympics game um super or Excuse me. Uh, Super Nintendo came with Mario World, um, you know, and then later Mario Nintendo sixty four came with Mario sixty four. Uh, I don't remember PlayStation ever coming with a game, and PlayStation two definitely awesome. didn't come with a game. Yeah, GameCube didn't either. <clears throat> they just put Luigi's Mansion out like really soon after, and I think you got if you bought the system, you got like ten dollars off Luigi's Mansion. That was about <laughs> as far as that went. Ten dollars uh, off. Kiss my hey, ass. Wii Sports, Wii Sports is like one of the most sold games in history. Yeah. Because it came with the Wii. <laughs> Just because it came with the Wii. It's ridiculous. Um, um let's get into another story here. Uh yeah. so I'm a huge He Man fan. Big time. Okay. Really? I love Masters of the Universe. I love He Man. Uh filming begins in April for the Masters of the Universe Netflix movie. Uh is so it a no, it's not a sequel to the Dolph Lundgren Shit. classic, Shit. 1987 classic. Um, He-Man is going to be played by Kyle Allen, who, if you're familiar with the West Side Story film that was just released a year or two ago, yeah, exactly, um, never heard of him, but he looks like he could be a good Prince Adam, and apparently he's bulking up right now. He's working out a lot, eating a lot. Um, I'm kind of... Not excited, Josh, because every time they've announced this movie like 10 times in the last 10 years and something happens where it doesn't end up getting filmed. Will so, it take place on Eternia? Yeah, don't go to Earth. Don't go to Courtney Cox's chicken restaurant. Don't go to the music store. Even I don't want to see Esther went to Earth, you know, in one of the sequels. I don't want to see Gwildor, okay? The <laughs> Key Master. 
I want to see Orko. I want to see Trapjaw. I want to see all the people that they couldn't afford to fucking put in the film in 1987. I want to see He-Man actually lift his sword as Prince Adam, <laughs> say by the power of Grayskull, and fucking turn into He-Man. Because that's w- that one phrase is what cap- captured every child's imagination in the 80s. And that's why it was such a huge deal. Because they were turning in from a nobody into the strongest man in the universe. It was, it was amazing. I still love it. Battle Cat. We need Battle Cat and She-Ra. Yeah, uh, they, so they, well, you know. She-Ra's, She-Ra's probably not going to be in it. Because She-Ra's owned uh, intellectual properties owned by a completely different company. Because, yeah, because Hasbro, or excuse me, Mattel sold the rights to She-Ra back when He-Man was worth jack shit in the 90s. Uh, so it's two totally different... It's like X-Men for Fox. Like in oh Marvel my. Studios. Yeah. Yeah, they, they screwed themselves. Uh, so whenever they get She-Ra in like a toy line or a cartoon, it's always they have to deal with the company they sold it to. So it just makes it a pain in the ass for Mattel. You know... When I watched the Wrath of the Titans, uh, or Clash of the Titans, the remake, I was kind of pissed off whenever I saw him look at the weapons and then the owl was there from the old one, and he just throws it into the trash can or whatever, and it kind of pissed me off, because that was one of my favorite parts of the old one, but I would not mind, like, a little cameo from dude with the Keymaster guy, you know, just kind of being kicked aside or something, or, you know, they break his key thing. Will they? will throw back to the old movie. <laughs> just, just don't even put him. No, don't even put put. I don't want to see him in the film. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, and I don't want to see uh, the frickin' principal from uh, Back to the Future either. I don't need to see Mr. Strickland because he was playing <laughs> the frickin' detective. Uh, Mr. Strickland, Mr. Strickland, it's me, Marty from school, sir. The school <laughs> burnt down ten years ago. But you sure as hell look like a slacker. That's right, sir. I am a slacker. Um, next story. All right. McDonald's. McDonald's workers are begging customers to please stop ordering adult Happy Meals. Workers are super stressed by the limited time promotion that runs through the end of October. So McDonald's, we've talked about adult Happy Meals on the last episode. Josh and I are psyched about it. I tried to get one. Couldn't get one. They were sold right out. Here. Yeah, they don't have the boxes. They don't have the toys. As as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I know, you still can't get them in my town. You cannot get them in Eugene, Oregon. They they were not prepared for the demand that it would bring in. And I'm not happy. I didn't get a Happy Meal. I'm not happy. Josh, are you happy? No, no. Yeah. When I go to North Carolina, I'll try to get you a toy. At Please. least, or the box. Please. I'll try. Um... And if you see any boo buckets, because they were released yesterday, yes. I haven't got a boo bucket yet, but I'm we're gonna go try to get some boo buckets tonight. They're a dollar ninety nine. Uh, I've seen the witch and I've seen the ghost so far on social media. I don't care which one I get. I just want one or two. I don't even need all three. I just need a couple. I just want a boo bucket, Josh. I don't ask for a lot of things in life. I don't. We want a sponsor for the show. I want a couple emails to slash tracks two thousand twenty at gmail dot com. Josh wants his Josh wants his fucking Freddy movie financed, uh, and I want a boo bucket. Okay, fuck for the love of Christ, man! Like I want just want small bucket. things. Even um, if it's the witch. Yeah, last in here. You know what? We're gonna end the show on this. This is the last story of the show. Uh, nurse arrested for using a dead patient's debit card to buy snacks. Minutes after the patient passed away. So, and it could have been one of those last second munchy things, though. You know? I, uh, I saw a meme. The leaves the body. Yeah. I saw That's, a, fucked up. That's fucked up. I saw a meme for this story, and it said, You're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> Why wait? Snickers. It was hilarious. Um, so, Aisha <laughs> Basharat. 23 of Birmingham, England. Uh, Birmingham, England. This is a real story. This actually happened. I had to double... Re- yeah, she's British. I had to double research this because I wasn't sure if this was true or not. Minutes after an older woman passed away of COVID, 
Aisha took the lady's debit card and went down to the snack machine and bought candy, chips, and a bar. So, like, bubbles on Trailer Park Boys. Used her debit card, put it in the machine. It's on camera. They have footage of it. She tried to use the card four days later on her next shift, but by that time, the card had been canceled, and she's on camera twice now, and they tracked the, you know, the information of where she bought, where the card was used to Aisha, and she was, you know, investigated, found guilty, and she was sentenced to five months in jail. Wow. Yeah. See, the fact that they're British makes me think that they had, like, a gentleman's agreement uh, before she died. You if know. you die, can I use your debit card to go buy some fucking snacks? Like, where are you going with this, you yeah. freaking yeah. insensitive... They're so uh, nice. There's all I'm saying and so polite. Oh, yes, dearie. Get you a bag of crisps. <laughs> you know, you took such good care of me. Blah. Oh, well, she's dying of COVID. She probably can't even breathe. Uh, she's oh, probably yeah, not the speaking. I'm sorry. She's probably not okay. talking on a respirator, Josh. Okay. That's uh, fucked up. I'm glad before she's I die, death. darling, before I die, why don't you go <laughs> go ahead and get yourself some tea and scrumpets? Uh, <laughs> Josh, why don't you do us both a favor and end the show? Okay. Um, just so you know, if if during my flight I go down in a in a ball of fire, um, <clears throat> this was recorded pre death of the eighty slasher librarian. It's going to be launched on the channel. Uh, if you're watching this the day of, probably Friday or Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you all so much for watching. Check out our Patreon, okay? Dollar a month, support the channel. It's not too much to ask, right? Uh, be sure to write us at uh, slashtracks2020 at gmail.com. Anything you want to say. Literally anything. Forward us the, you know, uh, ads that you get about Erectile dysfunction, whatever. Just send it in. We got to have something there. Yeah, we um, haven't even got any spam. We got yeah, no, literally send it, send it spam. no interaction whatsoever. Questions, comments, concerns, ideas. Do you like Corey Feldman? Do you want to <laughs> crowdfund Josh's movie idea? Anything. How tall are we? Why am I wearing a Blue Jays hat? You can ask if any of these questions. Yeah, if you don't write us... We're going to send you a case of uh, yeah. Flaming Hot Mountain Dew. We'll find out where where the person who decided not to write us is, because we don't even know who said person is, but we will find it. We, we're like <laughs> Liam Neeson in Taken. We will find out, and you will have a case of Flaming Hot Mountain Dew at your doorstep. So you better write us. And until then, be excellent to each other. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog. <laughs>